So now since we've unfortunately reached the offseason for the Baltimore Ravens a lot earlier than we had hoped for, um, there's a lot of wish lists that are being created. What Ravens fans hope end up happening with this team. And I know the comment section, oh y'all, y'all put wish lists every video, but I'm certainly sure it'll be there uh, for this one. And we're going to hear from one Ravens fan, his wish list of what he hopes happens uh, this offseason. But before we get into it, I got to give a special shout out to the newest Team Keep It Clean patrons, uh, Travis B. Uh, and Stanton. A appreciate the both of y'all. Uh, and really shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons. Now, quick, shout out to everybody who's not even a patron anymore. Uh, some people stepped away from being a Team Keep It Clean patron, and that's fine. I, I appreciate any time that you even spent as a patron, but I know stuff changes. Some Sometimes different situations come up, and sometimes you're just like, hey, look, I don't feel like being a patron no more, and that's fine. I, I love y'all, and I appreciate y'all. Thank you for just really everybody that contributes to this channel because y'all all contribute to this channel uh, a lot. So with that being said, let's get into this first question uh, that came from uh baltimore's own 54 he said a true ravens wish list from a long time support he said hey how are you i know it's been a minute since i wrote in but after watching the press conference i had to see your thoughts but it's not really a question but more of a wish and a wish of i hope they get smart and actually do this i love my ravens but something's got to give all right let's see what he got to say uh, i really would <laughs> he said i really would like us to the, yeah this oh let me just read it uh, I really would like us to trade for DK Metcalf or Tyreek Hill or big name ball hog wide receiver like them. Uh, that's what we need. And since they want to run the ball so much and so many stupid plays like when they run it up the middle or run it uh, where the the drama is. Get a big body running back like Derrick Henry uh, and edit the O-line a little bit where we are weak. Uh, at. I feel like that will fix our problems on offense. But this is not Madden and I know that will never happen in real life. But it sounded good coming from my mouth. So. Um, I, uh, wow, that, that definitely is a wish list. Um, the, the biggest name that they could go out and get as far as wide receiver right now is a DeAndre Hopkins. Um, I don't envision DK Metcalf going anywhere. Tyreek Hill definitely, uh, ain't going anywhere. Um, so DeAndre Hopkins, cause he'll be out there. He's, he's on the trade block already. Uh, whether he ends up being traded now, if, if the, if he gets traded, Ravens have an advantage. I mean, not an advantage, but they have a bigger opportunity. If he gets released, Ravens don't stand a chance, in my opinion. Reason I say that because if he's Ravens could fork up some capital to acquire De DeAndre Hopkins, but then I'm thinking about it. Right now, they only got five picks, and you know Ravens, they love them draft picks. So that kind of makes me think like, oh, with the I mean, and with DeAndre Hopkins, I'm, I'm not like one of them. I ain't thinking, oh yeah, they for sure gonna do it. I think it's a possibility, but. I'm leaning to more, more toward the side of no already. Uh, not that I wouldn't want them to, but I just don't think they will. But then now that I really think about it with the draft picks that they have, or the few draft picks that they have, um, they're not going to want to get those up to get no DeAndre Hopkins. Because where would they get more draft picks from? Well, you got some decisions that you can make on some other players and whatnot, but yeah, man, so I, I don't see it. Uh, and then with Mike Evans, he could possibly become a possibility. It depends on what they do there at the quarterback situation. Because any quarterback that goes to Tampa Bay, you got Mike Evans, you got Chris Godwin. You, I mean, you, you got a nice little stable right there, receivers to walk into. Um, but so we'll see if, if any of them comes available. But, I mean, they would have a high asking price as well. Um, so as far as a, a big-time receiver, I mean, we can hope. Uh, my expectations for that are kind of low, but we'll see. Uh, I think the Ravens will be more so in the Alan Lazard, maybe a DJ Shark type of thing. And they're not bad receivers. Um, they're not bad at all. Uh, and they do have bigger bodies, bigger frame receivers. Um, so, I mean, they could come in and definitely help out. And then, of course, scheme is everything. Um, so we'll see how that goes as well. And then who's your quarterback going to be? Hopefully it's Lamar Jackson, but that's not set in stone. So that's a big question right there, too. So Ravens, um, my wish list for the Ravens uh, is just really to fix the offense. Fix the offense, um, obviously, to get an offensive coordinator who, like my, my, my wish list personally, Ravens update the philosophy. They upgrade the philosophy. And while they don't stop, don't stop running the ball. 
but you got to focus on passing a lot more and getting your receivers involved and uh, using guys' talents, using their talents a lot more. Um, not forgetting about playmakers. That would be a big wish list that I would have for the Ravens going into next season. Don't forget about your playmakers. It's okay if somebody's going off in a game to keep going to them or if somebody's going off in a game, it's okay for the next game for them to still keep going off, for you to keep feeding them. It, it's, it's okay. So that's, that's fine. There ain't no problems with that. Um, and I, I would just like them to invest more in, in the offense and really realize just how valuable it is and how much it can really shift your team from being competitors to contenders. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like got to made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You two team keep it clean. You see my boy, he like got to Team Keep It Clean, welcome to another episode of Questions from Subs. You want to be a part of it for the patrons, you can send it, your questions directly on Patreon. Of everybody else, you can send an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. Don't send it anywhere else, or else it ain't going, it's going in the trash. Anyway, uh, next question came from a Team Keep It Clean patron, who my guy Anthony, who's been a patron for four days. So brand new patron, he said, what's going on, bro? Love the content, keep being great. I've been watching for a while now and always send my uh, Ravens fans, friends to the page. Hey, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, and he said, I... I <laughs> <laughs> he said I've been talking nonstop about Lamar's contract Like 79% of the world But I've been a Ravens fan since 2005 And one thing I know Is that we take care of defense first But I think this next two years We are going to do things differently I see us signing Lamar by letting Juice Man Chuck, uh, Calais Campbell uh, Justin Houston, JPP And maybe, hear me out Snoop, letting Snoop go as well To pay Lamar And actually uh, tag Patrick Queen Do you see that possibility uh, happening Sorry for the long story but everyone thinks I'm crazy But I can smell a possibility on that move A franchise tag for Patrick Queen I don't see that Because one they got Roquan Smith um, Two Between now and when that Time comes they got to decide by I think May If sometime in May I think if they're going to pick up his Fifth year option and that so that has to either be they either going to pick it up or they're not going to pick it up. So that's going to decide whether Patrick Queen is on a one year deal. He got one year left on his deal and this will be the last year of his deal with the Ravens or he has two years left on his deal. Um, but I, I just I don't see a scenario where they would franchise tag Patrick Queen because they're already paying Roquan a lot of money. Uh, then on top of that, if they franchise tag Patrick Queen, whatever the because it's the highest of the five top paid inside linebackers or people at his position. Um, so if they franchise tag him, then all that money will be guaranteed. So say, for instance, the um, the franchise tag for linebackers is 15 mil. That's 15 mil cap hit right there. Ravens ain't going to want that. Not for somebody who's not their guy uh, at inside linebacker. Roquan Smith is their guy. Patrick Queen is cool now. He's nice. He's been doing his thing, especially this year. But that's not their guy. So I just don't see a franchise tag happening for Patrick Queen. Now, um, for all these other guys that you talked about, I don't really think none of them have anything to do with Lamar. Uh, I, I think a lot of them were gone already. Calais Campbell, Justin Houston, you brought them up. And I think though they could retire. Marcus Peters... Uh, we've been saying that this is probably his last season with the Ravens anyway. Um, and then Chuck Clark, yeah, him too. I mean, I thought he was going to be going last year, especially with the whole Kyle Hamilton thing. He's like, they drafted a safety in the first round. Oh, man, get me out of here. But they obviously didn't budge on that. Then they gave him a nice, nice little raise too. They're like, hey, Chuck, thanks for being a great teammate. Here's a little raise, a little bump in your salary and whatnot. Um, so, but, and JPP, JPP was just here for this year. That, that, he, I mean, he wasn't in no long term plans for them. Uh, but Snoop. Snoop is an interesting one. Uh, I don't see them letting Snoop go, though. I mean, unless they got, like, some crazy offer for him, which I don't really think they would. But that that would be an interesting one right there. Next question came from my guy John, who's been a patron for 23 days. Shout out to Jordan. Who's number 23 on the Ravens right now? 23, 23, 23. I can't think of it. Who's number 23? Because it used to be Tony Jefferson. But this year, Wow. Like, I'm, am I a bad fan? Because I cannot remember who number 23 is. Anyway, next question came from my guy, John. He said, hey, what's up, Engraven? Hope all is well with you and the fam. I was watching the presser, and I heard Hobbs saying about building wide receiver. Oh, building wide receiver room. Fingers crossed, he said, to give Lamar a chance to be his best. Hopefully, they do. 
Uh, thanks for all you do, bro. So like Roman, I am out. Oh, why you had to do Roman like that? But hey, yeah, hopefully that, that that's what I said after the press, man. They said all the right things, which is great. It's a great start. But now it's about delivering on those promises. Next question came from BG Method, who's been a patron for a year. Appreciate you. He said, um, I really believe we are going to find a way to keep Lamar Jackson. I was down about it, but I'm feeling optimistic now that I'm over the game. Uh, you and the family t take care. Hey, I hope you're right. I, I, I really hope you're right. I um, mean, I know that presser from yesterday. Well, yesterday. Uh, well, it was yesterday as of the day I'm recording this because I'm recording this on Friday at 10.24 a.m. But um, that press, I know it gave a lot of people more sense of hope that the Ravens are going to sign Lamar. But it, it, now it's time to make it happen. Next question came from a brand new patron. My guy, Travis, who says he's been a patron for zero days. So he literally just became a team keep it clean patron. I mean, that was him who we gave a shout out to in the beginning of the video. He said, hey, man, so with the Ravens season tragically coming to an end. Uh, how do you or yeah, how do you pass the off season? Hopefully next time we see the Ravens in action, Lamar will be our starting quarterback. Hope you and the family are doing great. Thanks for all that you do. Now I appreciate you supporting, man. How do we pass the off season? Oh, hey, look. A lot of times, like, I will look at the off season and be like, oh man. Oh yes, great. This is oh, nice. Um, all right, now things gonna slow down. Now we get a more of a break. And, I mean, the offseason is a lot more chill than the regular season. But the offseason is still crazy. The offseason is still very crazy. And this offseason is going to be crazier than most. Like, last, I thought last offseason was crazy. And it was. Last offseason was crazy. It was busy. It was, like, nonstop. Well, we did have some slower moments here and there. But we, we right here in the offseason, too. Uh, things are still busy in the off season too, and there's going to be videos for you every day in the off season too. So we ain't going nowhere. Next question came from my guy Dominique, who's been a patron for three months. Appreciate you, Dominic. He said, "What's up, Engraven? Hope everything is good and well with you and the fam." After the ending to the season, I know we all see what J.K. had to say with him saying that. I know he is not the only one that is thinking that or thinking like that, and wants Giro gone as well. Well, boom. Well, we know what happened with that. Uh, and if we're being honest, I still think Lamar wrote them fire Greg Roman paper. So let's say they decide to keep G-Row. Well, okay, well, ain't, we ain't got to worry about that. Uh, he said, so we can skip that part. Uh, he said, I hope you're having a wonderful day. I've been thinking about how much leverage does uh, Lamar have in these contract talks. I really believe he wants to be here. And after the way the season ended, hopefully the front office wants him here too. The team proved that they can't win without him. Even though they won two games, it wasn't really against good teams. <laughs> In your eyes, what are the things Lamar can use to leverage himself even more? Um, I would say his value. His, his value to the team, um, what he brings to this fan base. Uh, he can point to them and say, look, like, because you got to do this stuff in business. You got to play the game. He can say, look, look at the attendance when I'm, when I'm there, when I'm starting. Look at all the fans in the stands. Look at all the jerseys that they got on. Look at all of that. Now, I don't see him doing the whole Jersey part because that could be sort of um, that could be sort of uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, hmm, look at them wearing my jersey. And I, I don't think he would be like that. Um, but it, it, it could be used in business. Like, look, look, at, look at all these people and, and look at all the people that are not there when I'm not there. If I'm not playing, if I'm not active, look at the people that don't show up. Um, but then more, even more importantly, well, just as important, uh, the product on the field. The points that we score. And, and look what I've done without you even give me, giving me the best of the best. Look at it. Look at our success rate. Look at how much we've won. We obviously haven't accomplished the ultimate goal yet. But, hey, it, without me, you probably won't even come close to achieving the ultimate goal. So I, I think he, he could use a lot of that stuff to his advantage uh, in negotiations. And, again, with the Ravens. On their side, too. Now, they're going to use their stuff, too. Because they're going to say, hey, Lamar, look. These last two years, you've been hurt. Why, why should we give you X amount of dollars if you didn't even finish the seasons? Why, why, why should we do that? Or is it going to happen again? Should we expect it to happen again? I mean, it's happened two years in a row. So, well, why should we do that? So, I, I think... um. However this thing goes, I am, because um, we don't have any clue how it's going to go. We don't have any clue how it's going to turn out. I just wonder, like, 
it's so many different scenarios that you got to take into account. Like, for instance, what if they franchise tag them and they, they franchise tag them to be like, all right, we want to see you finish this year out. What if they did that? Because that's that's a scenario I could see playing out. Uh, what if they do sign him to a long term deal? What if they do that? And if they sign him to a long term deal, I wonder what the language in the contract is going to be as far as the guarantees, the guarantees for injury. I wonder what if, gonna, it's, if it's going to have any like crazy stipulations, anything like that. I wonder how that's going to be. Um, and then, on the other hand, there's him getting traded. Next questions came from my guy, BB. He said, do you think the Lamar Jackson contract negotiations are a negative distraction for the players and coaches? Uh, well, certainly. There's definitely a, definitely a big distraction because everything that goes on with Lamar, everybody goes back to the contract. They go like, oh, it's because of the contract. Oh, it's because he didn't got a contract. Oh, Lamar's not playing. Oh, well, he's holding out because of his contract. Oh, Lamar did this. Oh, it's because of his contract. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely a distraction. Uh, and he said, what will it take for the issue to be resolved? And do you think the Ravens even have the cap to pay Lamar what he deserves? They, they certainly got the cap to do it. It's just a matter of if they want to. Um, now, what will it take for it to be to, for it to be resolved? They would either have to pay him or trade him. Sim as simple as that and straightforward as that. Um, and he said, the head coach should be in the offensive and defensive playbooks, not micromanaging, but understanding and influencing the style of play calling, possibly making a different call over the coordinator due to situational football. Now, um, you said the head coach should be in, in the offensive and defensive playbooks. I think he certainly plays a factor in those. I know a lot of people always talk about, oh, Harbaugh don't even know X's and O's like that or whatnot. But when you said he, he shouldn't be micromanaging, but he should be understanding and influencing the style of play calling. He certainly does that. He certainly does that for sure uh, with the Ravens. Uh, then he said uh, the open offensive coordinator position needs to be filled by someone not already involved with the team. And yeah, uh, I agree. I, I agree that uh, it should be somebody who's not a family friend, um, not family, uh, but somebody who truly is the best man for the job. Next question came from my guy, the legit goat. He said, I'm the only one who thinks this. And this was before Roman got released. He said, yes, I believe we need to fire Roman, but I also believe we're in a great position for next year. I believe we will be signing Lamar again. My reason are that he did say he wanted to bring a Super Bowl to Baltimore and plenty of players, friends and family, even media teams say Lamar is a man of his word. Not saying we're going to get that Super Bowl with Roman as OC, but why would he say that if he didn't mean it? And I could get it. Uh, it could have been a, a, mo a thing in a moment, but I don't believe so. I also believe we will sign Lamar because I read a lot of reports and tried adding the math myself correctly. Oh, correct me if I'm wrong. But the start of the 2023 season with all the free agents plus the players we might cut, uh, we might possibly have about 48.8 mil in cap space next year. Now I know that probably won't be enough to sign Lamar with what he's asking for, and we might have to release some more players in a depth chart. But we have five tight ends for what? <laughs> We all know for a fact after wide receivers on the roster now will be gone next year when Bateman and Duve come back. Keep J.K. and Gus for the third string running back on a practice squad, hoping they pass through waivers and all that and use them for call ups. I don't want the Baltimore Ravens uh, are, are trying to do is convince Lamar that they want him to sign him for a good amount of money, but more team friendly so they can resign. Uh, or sign or resign other players so i do believe we'll sign lamar it's just taking longer than any of us at end of the bar fans would like I'm not saying they will give lamar help but that's what they want uh him to believe uh, and he's not believing any of it i know this sounds crazy but we should also trade ronnie stanley think about it all right so first before we get to that part ronnie stanley ain't going nowhere by the way um and if they trade him like trading him or cutting him there will be so much dead money on the cap it, it would not be worth it at all For Ronnie Stanley just got to hope that he remains healthy that's it because when he's healthy uh I mean m minus against Trey Hendrickson but besides that Ronnie Stanley is healthy he's really good he, he's, he's, he's really good um but that's you just hope he stays healthy um now with uh the the cap space yeah it's so many different things that can impact the cap space there's draft picks there's free agents there's guys that they sign the future uh deals there's resigning their own free agents L lamar's not gonna take up no 48 meal on the cap space he, no they they got plenty of space to to resign lamar if they really want to get it done um now back to the ronnie stanley part he said he's a good player but he rarely has played a full season and we're paying him more money than he than he wants 
Uh, oh, he been giving us when it comes to playing time we cut him. That would definitely free up cap if we give his contract to another team. Uh, didn't get into the thought of where to trade him to and want to get him for, I don't, I don't know, we could get a good amount because we know EDC loves those draft picks, but sometimes you have to lose something good to gain something great. I, I like that saying, but if you, if you trade Ronnie Stanley, yeah, you can get some draft picks, but you're going to be having a lot of dead money on your cap with that. Um, I don't know. I'm just trying to see ways thinking the positive about the whole situation and how to keep Lamar. I've been watching since 2019. and wanted to say thank you for getting me through my days at work. Uh, listening to you with my AirPods on this. This is my first time ever sending a question. I don't know why, but I'm kind of nervous to do it. But just like I'm hoping Lamar won't be in 2023, <laughs> I'm out. Hey, no, I appreciate this, man. I, I hope that um, while you're working, you don't get like too distracted or nothing. Or hopefully the videos, they don't put you to sleep. At the length of this next question, it looks like this is going to be the last one on this episode. Uh, Ravens fall from grace. Next question came from my guy, Mark. He said, hey, buddy. I've appreciated your videos this season. I found you around week two to three. Oh, so around, who do we play week one? The Jets, week two was, was it the Dolphins, week two? And week three, I think, was the Bills. I don't even remember, but I appreciate it. Glad, glad you came through, man. Uh, it's nice of you content that is not filtered through purple glass. <laughs> you know what's funny? Just to, just to talk about that real quick. Because I've seen, um, I think it was after the presser. Saw a couple people. I saw. I saw one guy say, "This is gonna. This is gonna be the last time you get in my view, buddy." I was thinking, oh, "Okay, well, I guess that's that. I guess he didn't like the videos, and that's fine. That's fine. If you don't like it, just go. You can press the X button on YouTube, play or whatever. Close it out, or scroll somewhere else and, and find something else. I get that. Not everybody's gonna like our style, and that's fine. I respect that so much. I respect it." Uh, I would not ever want anybody to be sitting there watching something that they did not like. That is crazy to me. That, that, that just wouldn't make any sense. So if you don't like it, you can keep going. That's fine. Um, then there was, uh, I saw somebody else say, man, you must have something against the Ravens, man. Why are you so negative? And I was thinking, what? Negative? No. Honest? Yeah. Negative? No. I'm not on here saying, oh, I hate everything that the Ravens do. They do this bad, that bad, that bad, that bad. I mean, we'll, we'll talk about the bad stuff that they do. We also acknowledge the good stuff that they do as well. And I think there was there was like one more person that said like the same thing in, in the video about oh the reviewing the press conference. And I think they took my message the wrong way. My message, because my message in that video, they they said a lot of great things, but seeing is believing because they 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 say all this stuff, which is nice, but. We have a lot of reasons to be pessimistic about it to where we, we, we want to see it be proven. We, we, yeah, the, the talk game is great, but we want to see it be put into action because, again, they can say all the great stuff. But if they're not delivering on that, then that's that. And I know some people took that. And like, Oh, you being negative, buddy. And I'm like, oh, hey, well, however you feel is how you feel. If I can't change that, I, I, I can't. I can only be me. So for anybody who's ever watched any video, I thank you very, very much. Very, very much. And now while I was talking, I end up uh I end up losing the question. So give me one second so I can pull it up if I can find it. Oh no 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 no. Oh, there it goes. I found it. All right, we're back now. So let's run it back. Uh, he said, hey, buddy, I have appreciated your videos this season. I found you around week two to three. It's nice to view content that's not filtered through purple glasses. We like the Ravens, but let's keep it real for sure. Exactly. That, that's how I feel about it, man. We, we love these Ravens. We love them. And honesty is the best policy for me. Um, I, I'm not somebody who, and I think that's what I think a lot of people do. They take the fact that I think, and you see people try to pin their fandom against like other fans and stuff. Well, I'm a better fan than you. You're not a real fan because of X, Y, Z. Uh, if, if you don't, uh, there's a lot of fans that feel like if you don't just blindly follow the team, then you're a fake fan. You're not a real fan. If you don't just take everything that the Ravens say for what it is, if you don't agree with every single move that the Ravens make, then you're a fake fan, buddy. And I think that actually, like, anyway. So, 
He said, more importantly, you keep it clean. I will join the support team when I can. Oh, you already did, man, for supporting the channel. So you're good, man. My thoughts. I needed a night to sleep on this. I woke up with some good clarity, and I am peaceful. Hey, that's always good when you got peace, man. Uh, he said, I can only give the Ravens my emotional energy for three hours. As you know, it takes a bit longer to get over losses sometimes. Uh, it depends on who you are. Um, for me, uh, usually a couple minutes. That's Yeah, usually a couple minutes. Even the, the playoff loss, like... When it happened, like, during the game, it's, you see all this stuff, you get frustrated and whatnot. Um, but, like, right after the game, especially that one, especially with, with it, since Lamar didn't play too, I think that helped me get over it a lot quicker. I mean, I don't usually be, like, sulking over losses or anything like that. Um, but, yeah, it was just a couple minutes for me for this last one. Um, but anyway, let's keep going. He said, my father, me, and my brother uh, have had season tickets to the Ravens since 96. Shout out to Section 105. Oh, y'all got good seats. Y'all got good seats. I think, yeah, y'all yeah, y'all got really good seats. He said, I've poured my soul out to them hundreds of times since 18. Oh, my father passed. Uh, we have been selling some of the weeks here and there. Hey, sorry to hear about your dad, man. Sorry to hear about that. I appreciate you sharing that, though, man. Um, so that, that like, I'm sure that makes um, you just... It makes you appreciate Raven stuff so much more because of the memories that you got with your dad, man. He said, this was the first year we sold all the games. I mean, it's a whole day investment from tailgating to post tailgating and then traffic back home. You ain't lying. You ain't lying. A football game is an all day experience because, yeah, it, it's a lot. It, it, it is a lot. It ain't for everybody. It is a lot. It's fun. It's even more fun when your team wins. It, like, it's way more fun when your team wins. When your team loses, it's still going to be fun, but it's a little different. Uh, but anyway, uh, he said, running a business and raising a family doesn't allow for this anymore. Priorities, brother. I hear you. He said, next step may be to sell the PCLs this offseason. In today's world, uh, it's not worth it anymore. Uh, I don't get back what I put in. Mm. Mm. Oh, that's real right there. He said, the sad state of affairs that... That is the Lamar Jackson Baltimore Ravens saga can be nicely split between the two parties involved. For Lamar's part, injured or not, you need to have clear communication with those that support you. Love rooting for you in the organization that pays you. You have proven yourself, no doubt, but the Ravens were the only team that saw your potential on draft day. See, that part, <clears throat> I disagree with that part. They're, they're the only team that, I mean, only one team can draft uh, a player uh, because a player can't be drafted multiple times. Um, but Lamar definitely would have got drafted for sure. He just would have probably got drafted in the second round. That's it. And I mean, obviously we'll never know, but I, that, that part, Oh, the, the Ravens were the only team that saw you. I, I, I disagree with that. But anyway, he said, fast forward. I'm a man that likes to handle my own business. So I respect an athlete repping himself, but never understood the, his football time and no more negotiations thing. Roquan Smith proved you can negotiate during the season and cash in based on a few current weeks of production. If you are going to be your own agent, you can't shut the doors on your agency because football is happening. It's immature and not good business in my opinion. You have to cash in when you're hot. And if he would have negotiated, say, week six to eight, he would have got what he wanted because he was at the top of the league in most categories. The losses we suffered were defensive breakdowns, not offensive struggles. Mm. Interesting. I don't think um, him shutting it down during the football season is immature. I just think he just because he knows how this thing works. Like Roquan Smith is a great player, phenomenal player. But his name is not Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson's name alone, like versus a Roquan Smith name, completely different energy towards it from the league, from fans, from everybody. Roquan Smith does, and again, this is not a shot at him. This is just their names. Roquan Smith's name doesn't even garner half the attention that Lamar Jackson's name does at all. And, and it's, it's not close at all. Uh, so with Lamar Jackson, he could have negotiated during the season. There could have been a back and forth and stuff during the season. But you, you see, like, I think that he, and he said it for him, he, he didn't want it to be a distraction for him. He said he just wanted to focus on football. But had he been negotiating during the season, you know, stuff gets out, stuff can leak and stuff like that. And a, as it did before the season, uh, you see how much of a distraction this whole thing has been toward the end of this season. 
I think if, if he would have been negotiating during the season, it would have been an even bigger distraction, not only for him, but for the whole team, too. Like it has been. Because they get asked all the questions about it, too. Hey, blah, 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 blah. hey where's Lamar? Blah, 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 blah. Hey, what's going on? And it, so, uh, yeah. Anyway, he said, uh, as far as his injury, I am old school, and he should have wrapped it up and went out there and fought because nobody's guaranteed tomorrow. He would have been rewarded in the end. There are countless examples where a player put a uh, team over self throughout football history. Vic, Woodson, Sean Payton are not in that locker room or in his body, but they have a right to their opinions because they lived it. Well, Sean Payton, I don't know about Sean Payton, but the other ones, maybe. <laughs> he said the O-line would have kept him clean, no doubt. What? That O-line? Hold up now, buddy. That O-line? You sure? That, ah, that, whoa, heavy disagree on that one. But, I, no, I, oh, yeah, highly doubt it. <laughs> highly doubt it. Um, and as far as him going out there, um, yeah, nobody is guaranteed tomorrow. As far as uh, playing in the NFL, uh, I mean, he is. He's, gonna, he's guaranteed another shot. But um, if you go out there, like, and not now, you take it a step further. Because we talk, you talked about the contract before and that being a, or I talked about it being a distraction to the team. What if you go out there and you're hurt and you, like, you can't contribute to this team the way that you want to? So with you being hurt, yeah, I know a lot of people say, hey, yeah, put a brace on it. Like Vic said, put a brace on it and go out there. If you're hurt and you go out there, you, you could hinder the team more than you could end up helping them. So that, yeah. Anyway, he said um, the O-line would have kept him clean, no doubt. I know he wasn't, uh, I know he wasn't 100% as he stated, but that's what ice is for. Uh, if it's all about the bag, then say it and we can move on. Again, if he would have said that, distraction. Hey, hey, team, right before the playoff game, I'm holding out because I ain't get paid yet distraction See? Uh, plenty of successful athletes have put that money first over team but they said it uh, for the Ravens please scream ah this is their formula sad but true on defense they open up the checkbook which I love what Ravens fan doesn't appreciate bullies on defense yeah that's true uh, but on offense they play three card Monty they pay interior trench guys first then tight ends and the rest Oh, not so much. Flacco got his only because he put together four games, four game span that rivals any history, uh, and the owner challenged him publicly before he did it. You notice, Mister B didn't do that this time around. <laughs> he said, "He said I, I ain't calling Lamar out, buddy. No, I ain't doing it. I ain't doing it because I ain't trying to go through this again." Oh, but anyway, running backs, we just keep drafting them wide receivers. Ha! I guess we don't need them in QBs. Good luck. We need a system overhaul, as you stated many times in different words. I, for the first time, think Harbs needs to go, along with Giro and a few others. Defense is fine and almost a separate entity. Yeah, the defense is fine. They, they, they are fine. Um, now, yeah, Giro is gone. Harbs is remaining. He's staying. Uh, they let that be known yesterday. Um, so, yeah. Uh, now, we ride it out again with Harbs and see how it goes. Hope for the best. Uh, I appreciate and love a great running game in Smash Mouth Trench Warfare. But we need to be able to rely on wideouts from time to time. Uh, for example, Torrey Smith and Anquan Bolden. Yes, they were such a perfect pair. Um, so we're still looking for that with the Ravens. Was thinking, hey, maybe it could be uh, Rashad Bateman in Hollywood. But injuries took that away from us. And then <laughs> Hollywood was taken away from us by the Cardinals. Um, so... Yeah, they, they did get a first round pick for him Which was that's great trade value for Hollywood uh, And they got Tyler Linderbaum And he was a really good uh, center As far as being a run block I know pass blocking was, But hey, yeah he could work on it um, So but he should be fine in the long run uh, He also said Regarding last night and the possibility of Trying to control the narrative with the Lamar saga What a better way to gain an advantage In negotiations than to try a QB dive Over the top uh, from the two to make it about Huntley rising to the occasion, blah, blah, blah. See, there were some people that pointed that out. Only a few people I've seen pointed out. You like maybe like the the third, maybe. I haven't seen too many people point that out, but I, I'm like, man, that is, um, that's a really good point. That's a really good point because that's, that's real right there. That's business right there. Hey, look, look what we did with Huntley. Look what we did with Huntley. You, 
I mean, you you can say we need you, but we don't need you as much as you think we need you. Huntley got this. Look what he did in this playoff game. Look, look, look at him, like you mentioned, rise to the occasion. He showed up when it mattered most. Oh, yeah, we good with Huntley. We don't need you. But anyway, um, he said, a total injustice for us as fans and the players. I'm not a coach, but I've played ball. You have at your disposal the bus. Uh, 230 pounds of Nigerian nightmare, historically over five yards per carry. J.K. Dobbins, a beast who begged for the ball all week. And the Ravens. <laughs> And the Ravens, true wide receiver one, Project Fat, 310 pounds of hurt, all of which are capable of pushing the power forward. No, they give it to the lightest choice in the backfield in some strange soap opera twist to hopefully create a narrative they want. See, we don't need to pay Lamar. Well, now they can uh, take that decision, just like Pete Carroll passing the ball on the goal line with one of the most dominant backs of the decade. It's unacceptable. And unlike Hobbs, I'm backing it up, turning them off. Though, I will tune into your content this offseason. Keep up the good work. And shout out to Mark. Appreciate that, Mark. Um, this was a good one. This was a good one. He 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 took it a lot of different uh places. But yeah, I I, I appreciate it. That was that was a really fun one to do. I appreciate you uh the way that you broke everything down and gave your opinions on everything. Um I that was that was good, man. Uh so yeah, I mean, that's that. He he laid a lot of stuff out. Uh, talk, touched on a lot of different topics And that was a uh, wonderful way To end this episode A question from Soaps Yeah this feels like a dream And you know just what I mean You see my boy He like gotta made it How to made it Boy he's a fan And he like the Ravens Like the Ravens And you know just what I mean You two team keep it clean You see my boy He like gotta made it Shout out to Graven.